It's not the movie's fault, but it's hard for me to remember this freaking title. Chase Lee Hockey here with the Blue Food Tunnel Reviewing, which brings me to you. Watch this about pre civil premise. You have two people showing up at a wedding and they're like, wait a minute, you're attractive. You're attractive. Let's go to the cloak closet and have sex. While they're about to do it, they realize, wait a minute, or he goes, wait a minute, I might have some baggage you want to know out before. And then she's like, whatever. And then they drive. He tells a story. She tells a story. He tells a story. She tells a story. And while this is going on, they realize, do they actually love each other while explaining why they have trauma for why they are who they are today? So, do you like this film? I thought it was way more grounded than other drama movies. I always want to say dramedy. There is some comedy in this movie, but it's more of a dramedy. drama. I always want to say dramedy. But yeah, also rom-com, sure. But I just don't think the comedy here is that predominant. I truly think this is about them trying to figure out why they screwed up in the past and who are they today. And with that, a lot of the stories that they talk about in the past, there are some funny ones here and there, but it's mostly like, damn, that sucks. Damn, that sucks. Damn, that sucks. And so for me, calling this any kind of comedy is really hard for me to do that. And like I said, it's more grounded than other rom-coms, even though I don't want to call it a rom-com, but this is best comparable to anything, anyone but you because it's kind of the same premise Two people not liking each other, but then kind of liking each other at the end. At least with this movie, I felt the characters were more grounded. They were more realistic. And like I said, out of the react, out of the re- theater reaction, is I would see these people like just walking down the street being normalized. While anyone but you are like the Hampton people with the pinkies in the air. And they're the rich motherfuckers. While these people are just the normal average Joes that you're like, yep, I could see why you're in the situation you are in. And you're just trying to live life the best you can. So when we talk about the positives, like I said, I like the story. I liked how it was told. I like the acting. And when I say how it's told, they tell each story while when they interject, they kind of interject them into the story and they're kind of part of the story and they're talking to them one-on-one. And I think that's actually a fun, unique way to actually tell the story because I haven't really seen that before where it's actually no shit. They just start talking. And he kind of ignore what's the past story, but then they continue with what's going on in the present. I think that's really cool. There's also just good scenes overall, especially one doing a party crashing scene. I think it's a very cute scene as well. Uh, I do think, like I said, the overall message at the very end, I think, does work about you know him having his big reveal and then her having kind of her big reveal at well as why she's in the position she is in. However, I do do not like the writing at the very end of what I mean by that is of course at the very end he has a secret and she's like I'm always going after the damaged guys um did you not hear what stories you talked about and what you've done especially you know with your fiance's brother and so I just I just don't like stories where you have these characters that are like dogging on a motherfucker but then do they not realize they're almost worse what is worse, a person about to get married, but then have sex with their brother, or some guy that has a five-year-old kid? And at the time, he wasn't ready, but she wanted the kid, but he is now trying to be in the daughter's life the best he can. Um, I think I choose the guy not having the biggest fuck-up, in my opinion. Just throwing it out there. So there is that story arc, which I didn't like whatsoever. Sorry, I'm picking this scab, and it's really annoying. So I'm sorry about that. So that was one story arc, like I said, that I just did not like whatsoever. And it did bring the story down a couple notches because of that. It was just like, nah, just, I'm not I'm not into that style of, you know, fuck you. You're the fucked up one. It's like, do you not look in the mirror whatsoever? And that was the same thing with Mean Girls, where they are... Basically, making this innocent girl do what they want to do, sabotaging her, and they get no consequence. And that really freaking bothers me in movies that do this. Also, what I find really interesting about this movie, I don't think there's a pacing issue, but I do think there's a repetitive issue. And what I mean by that is I understand they want to go through like four or five backstories of what they've been through, but some of them just felt like they were repeated. Like, okay, did that one really need to be told? Did that one really need to be told? I thought. Her backstories 
overall were a little bit better than his. His was just more of, you know, I was on a swamp, swamp and I was just having sex with a bunch of girls and I would just didn't feel good about myself. Okay, I understand that. At least with hers, she has a, just multiple interesting ones. But then when you think about it, it's like, can someone have that much Taylor Swiftness of, you know, is it always the guy? Maybe it's you internally. Even though I say that, I've been on a lot of dates where I'm like, I feel like I attract the island of misfits of girls where I'm like, oh, because one date I went on, I went to her place and her place was a disaster. I mean, you could tell that there's it, it, your place shouldn't look that horrible. And it was the biggest bottle of ketchup on her dining room table. Who doesn't put ketchup in the fridge first off? Number two, this was a Costco sized one. And it's like, why do you need that much ketchup? Like that much? So anyway, I know that sounds weird, but it's weird. And then girls, is FYI, when you brag to a guy like I give the biggest or best BJs. I don't know that's something to actually brag about. Anyway, overall, which brings me to you. I thought it was a decent movie overall. It was a good premise, good acting. Overall, fun story. Yes, some repetitiveness, and yes, some story arcs where I was like, is that really, really believable? So which brings me to you will receive a three out of five of futons, which equals that 60%. So let's see the critics new scores gave this one. So you have critics a 65% with 17 of them. Audience scores 73% with fewer than 50. No critic consensus. But for me as a whole, if you're going to a movie theater and you see this and anyone but you, I would vote this one 10 out of 10 times. So 60, 65, 73. Chase Lee Hockey here with the Blue Futon. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know things, Blue Topia. You Blue Tonys, thanks for watching. Have a great day. And I don't care. Watch this tape tomorrow. We can watch Ryan Unifrau. I receive a freaking one of you. Enjoy life. And yeah, try, try to meet people. I try to do that every single weekend. Sometimes I fail. Sometimes I succeed. But that is life. You're never going to be perfect.